Number 10, the scanner. This story comes from a user when she was in freshman year of college. She had never been with a boy and had never even kissed one and she decided she was tired of being so sheltered so she started going on Tinder. She met a boy for dinner and a movie after they had been chatting for a while and everything seemed pretty normal. He was then supposed to drive her home and it was late at night when she realized she had no idea where they were. The car was just on a gravelly road surrounded by farmland. The man said that he was just taking the back roads. Not ominous at all. He says that they were not far away and asked if he could turn on his police scanner. Her just thinking, okay, maybe this guy is a little weird. He then pulled over the car to the side of the road and turned off the headlight. Rightfully, she panicked and pretended to receive a phone call for her mom, being sure to say on the call that she was on a date and would be home soon. And he then took her home. To this day, she is glad she got out of the situation as she fears what might have happened on that road. Number 9. The Dog this one comes from a user who started talking to a guy on Tinder who happened to live just down the street from her. The guy would apparently constantly talk about his dog and how he wanted her to come over to his place so she could meet the dog. Eventually she did agree to come over and he told her to park her car diagonally next to a large boat that he had in the driveway, leaving only a few inches of room on either side. They eventually get in after the man answered the door in his boxers and she saw that there was almost no furniture inside the home. He then started asking her strange questions like if anyone was expecting to see her that night, what's her blood type, and who does she live with. She then realizes that this whole time she hasn't seen a dog or any evidence that one even lives there. When she asked about it, he simply smiled and continued on with his questions. She eventually managed to leave after he begged her to stay and then later asked her to join him on a ride into the mountains. Thinking back, she believes that he made her her park her car so tightly so she wouldn't be able to quickly escape. Number 8. The Friend this story comes from a self-called introvert who decided it was time for herself to open up and step into the dating world. She matched with a guy and they hit it off pretty well, talking pretty often. She enjoyed talking but realized that every time they spoke she got a lot of anxiety and had kind of a bad gut feeling about it, but she brushed it off as maybe just her introverted tendencies. Her friends encouraged her and she continued to speak with him after a brief period of ignoring his messages. She agreed to go out to dinner with with him, but when she showed pictures to her friends, they pointed out that he looked pretty similar to a shitty ex of hers, and so she panicked and called off the date, unable to continue with it. She then started receiving tons of calls from him, begging her to speak to him again, and when she finally picked up, the person calling revealed that they weren't even her Tinder match, but instead his friend. He said that the man had said he could have her, and that he knew what school she went to, and he would just hang around campus and wait. She blocked him and Fortunately, she never heard from them again. Number 7. The Train One of the most important parts of going anywhere is making sure you have a way to get home, and the guy in this story was presumptuous about where he was going to be spending the night. This girl invited her Tinder date to a concert where he proceeded to get incredibly drunk and unruly. She got tired of it and decided that she was going to ditch and go to a bar with some of her friends, so she asked him when his last train home was, and he responded by saying, it was already gone. She was shocked and asked him how he was planning to get home, and he responded with, I'm coming home with you. Pretty assuming, threatening, and creepy. He followed them to the bar, but he was soon kicked out for being so drunk that he couldn't even stand up. The next morning, she woke up to a string of pathetic phone calls from him, and finding out that he had ended up in the emergency room after being so drunk he fell through a window. Number 6. The Bag Alright, this one is probably the most intense and unsettling on this list. The girl had finally made it to the third date with her Tinder match and feeling pretty comfortable agreed to hang out with him in his home. He poured her a glass of wine and for the most part things seemed to be going well, until she started feeling the effects of something else having been mixed in her wine. Fortunately she recognized the feeling and made it to the bathroom where she notified the police. She passed out but was woken up by the police who put a bag over her head to lead her out of the home. A few days 
later, she was requested to come down to the police station and give her statement of what she was able to remember about that night. And she remembered the police having put a bag over her head, curious about why they would have done that. They responded that it was so she couldn't see what the man had set up for her throughout the house. Number 5. The Theorist Now to lighten the situation, let's look at one post that is a little less terrifying. This one comes from a guy who was staying in a hotel in a different city, deciding to invite a girl over from Tinder to make the night a little more interesting. When she got there, they shared small talk and ended up talking about astrology. Being nice, he encouraged her to continue and continue she did. Eventually, she started talking about how she fully believes in various different conspiracy theories like the Illuminati, fluorinated water, Washington being arranged into a pentagram, and other various things. He said that unfortunately, this made him lose any interest in her, and eventually it got so late that she just decided to leave. Not scary, but more just amusing and bizarre, and honestly thinking back on it, that may have been me. Number 4. The Stalker This one comes from a girl who started messaging with a guy on Tinder that wasn't her usual type, but still attractive enough. She notes how she made the dumb mistake of mentioning where she worked in their conversation. The same night she mentioned that, she was at work and saw a guy walk past who looked eerily like her Tinder match. A couple days later, she was at work again and was speaking to the man over the phone when she mentioned she would have to talk to him later because her phone battery was almost dead and she didn't have a charger. Just 10 minutes later, the same man she had seen the other day, her Tinder match, walked in with a phone charger for her to use, even though he had said he lived on the very other side of the city. She decided to cut ties there and saw that earlier in the day he had posted a selfie on Instagram with the caption, I am now a taken man. She said that for weeks afterwards, she would still see him walking outside of her work. Number 3. The Abductee Now let's look at another story that definitely could have maybe been me if I were a man. This girl met a man on Tinder that she had a great time talking online with and they seemed to get along really well. So they met up, but she then realized that she just wasn't really fully attracted to him, but they decided to keep talking. As time went on, he proceeded to talk about how he had been abducted by aliens throughout his life and even as far back as into his childhood. He had apparently been taken by the aliens multiple times because they had placed a tracking device in his arm, even showing her a scar that he had where he believed it had been placed. She decided that was finally where she had to call it off and he admitted he felt stupid for bringing it up on the first date. I don't know, is alien abduction something you would want to get out there quickly or is that like a third date, fourth date kind of thing? Number 2. The Cats this one comes from a guy who decided to meet with his Tinder date for the first time at a barbecue she was having with some of her coworkers. They got along pretty well, and by the end of the night, she invited him to come over to her place, and he agreed. On the way to her house, she mentions that she takes in stray cats. He says that he's allergic, but it shouldn't be an issue as long as he doesn't touch them, thinking that she has like maybe three or four. She responds by saying that she has 15. When they opened the door, he saw a dozen set of eyes staring back at him from the darkness. The house was apparently in a complete state of disarray due to the cats, and the girl apparently not putting very much effort into cleaning. He didn't back out immediately, but after watching about half of a movie, he decided he needed to get out of there. When he woke up a few hours later, he discovered his eyes had been swollen almost completely shut because of the cats. Number 1. The Mom this one is incredibly short and not overly unsettling, but is arguably the best one on this list and one of the biggest red flags ever. This girl agreed to meet her Tinder date for dinner, and when she got there, he was already there, with his mother. He said that she had to be there because he and his mom were a package deal. Would you move forward with that date or would you just walk out right there? Coming in at number 8, we have Moving In. This is such a freaky story, you really need to check out the history of a place before you move into it because you could be walking face first into a horror show. A Reddit user talked about moving into a new place and how they were so excited. After moving into this apartment, they would notice at night they would always hear a strange scraping noise. No matter how much they searched, they could never find the origin of this noise. After getting settled in for a few weeks, they started to get to know their neighbors. One of our Reddit users' neighbors told her that there were two families who used to live in this apartment. Apparently, Two families back to back have gone missing from this place. No one has been able to figure out what happened to them either. But I bet.
bet you the rent was so low at that apartment. Coming in at number 7 we have The Runaways. Reddit user Guy in Florida wrote on Reddit about a story of a mother who was dating someone new. Her new boyfriend was getting to know the family and I guess he was getting a little too close because one day he and her daughter ran off together. They took the family van and disappeared. The mother was devastated but couldn't understand why they would do this to her. She hired a private investigator to try and find them but all the leads that came back seemed to be kind of phony. Then a few years later the city drained the canal close to the mother's home and they found the van in the canal with the daughter and the boyfriend both inside. So maybe they didn't intend to run away together but the both of them just died when they drove off the road into the canal. Coming at number 6 we have Boat Accident. A man was on vacation with his wife and partway through the trip he booked a boat for the two of them to head out on a fishing trip. The day before the trip the man's wife got food poisoning so she could not go but she insisted that he head out and enjoy himself. Well a storm rolled in and he never made it back from the trip. She contacted the police but all that was found was a broken shell of the boat. She was devastated and eventually had to return home without her husband. Then a few weeks later she received a call from the local authorities who had seen him. They didn't get an opportunity to bring him in but he was spotted walking around the downtown core. She flew back out to find him and after following a trail of clues the search ended up at a dead end. Coming in at number 5 we have daddy didn't come home. Someone's dad going out for a pack of smokes and then never coming home is a story as old as time but not every dad who goes missing ran away from his family because he's a deadbeat dad. Sometimes you have a good old fashioned mystery on your hands. A redditor wrote in about a story he heard when he was younger about a man with a wife and two kids who went to work one morning. He called his wife when his shift ended. He was on his way home and he never made it back. All the regular legal events went through but he couldn't be found. One of the strangest parts about this case was there was footage of this man leaving work in his truck and his truck was seen on a security camera not even a mile from his home. But nothing could be found to help that family find their dad. His vehicle, any records of him, everything was gone forever. Coming in at number 4 we have The Seance. A girl at a Catholic school thought it would be a funny idea to mess around with some witchcraft in the basement of her school. I guess if you're going to a school that is protected by God it should be no surprise that witchcraft would be one of the ways you want to rebel. Well a group of girls pulled this off and afterwards one of the girls seemed to be acting strange. No one really paid attention until she started to have outbursts in class and her parents say that she started waking up in the middle of the night screaming. This all climaxed when the girl went missing in the middle of the night. Everyone in town went out searching for this girl but she was never found. Maybe messing around with dark magic attracted something or someone that stole her away. Coming in number 3 we have Mayumi Arashi. Her story blew up all over the internet a little while ago and it was all over reddit. The story of Mayumi Arashi, a young Japanese girl who went missing after she left home to meet up with a friend to study. Police got involved but they couldn't find her. Mayumi's sister Yoko spoke with her friend but she stated that Mayumi never planned to study with her that night. There was a male suspect who police thought could have been the one to kidnap Mayumi but they could never link him back to the case. Coming in at number 2 we have Lars Midetank. This is a wild story of someone who was out for what seems to be a normal vacation but then things start to get insane. It was Lars and his friends who went on a trip to Bulgaria and the group of them were having a pretty good time until things started to get out of hand. They got into a fight with some of the locals and Lars got hit in the head pretty hard. His eardrum got ruptured but the fight was broken up before things got any worse. The thing that sucks about this is that with his ruptured eardrum he was unable to fly and he and his friends were supposed to fly back in two days. He tells his friends that they should leave without him and they do but while Lars was alone he starts to become extremely paranoid. He thinks people are following him and he calls his mom to book him a flight back home and cancel all of his credit cards. The next day he goes to the airport and while waiting to get on the plane he is approached by airport security who wants to speak with him. He then runs out of the airport jumps a fence and runs into some bushes disappearing forever. Coming in at number 1 we have Dorothy Jane Scott. Bugs doing things wrote on reddit about the case of Dorothy Jane Scott. This is a very frightening missing persons case. Dorothy started getting calls from an unknown person. This person was telling her that they were going to find her and kill her and they had been stalking her for quite some time and they knew exactly where they were going to nab her from. Then one day when Dorothy was walking to her car in the parking lot of a hospital she was grabbed and she was never seen again. Police searched for her but there was no luck. What makes this even worse is that the killer would call Dorothy's family for years after 
after this happened to taunt them and try to drive them insane with the death of their daughter. Number 9. The Experiment Moving on we have one posted by reddit user ARJunks. Dave was working late one night in the lab and the phone rang. Hello? This is Dave speaking. Hello? This is Dave speaking. The caller shouted, whatever you do, do not pick up the phone. Then the call went dead. How did the caller get the lab number and who would waste their time trying to prank call this late at night? He went back to his work. He was almost at a breakthrough. If this experiment went right, this new energy could change the world. Just then the phone rang again. Furious, he spun his chair around to grab the phone. He accidentally knocked his workstation and everything went black. He wasn't in the lab anymore, but it was just empty darkness for miles. Hello? He yelled out, but there was no answer. Just then he got an idea. He pulled out his phone. It was almost dead, but it had a little reception. He called the lab. Someone picked up and he heard, hello, this is Dave speaking. Number 8. The Pills Our next one was written by K.R. Sham. I developed a sickness. The doctor prescribed me some pills. I was very sick so thank god I had my wife with me. She made sure I took my little red and blue pills every 6 hours. As time went on, my sickness only got worse. My skin got pale, I grew weak, and my eyes became sunken. My wife reached out to the doctor and he seemed to think an increase in medication would help. So now I was taking a dose every 4 hours. My condition only worsened. One day while my wife was out at the grocery store, I noticed that it was time for me to take my medication. It was a struggle but I managed to make my way to the medicine cabinet. There were little red and blue pills spilt all over the cabinet so I grabbed the pill bottle to put them back in. I opened it and that's when I saw it. My pills were white. Our number 7 on this list is The Shed written by Minboy. At the edge of the Warrens property sat their shed. It was an older creaky thing with no windows and a massive padlock on it. It kept everyone out except for the Warrens patriarch Jeff. The Warrens had two boys, Jeb and Evan, who both knew to never go in the shed. If they ever asked their mother about it, she would quickly change the subject. One day the boys were playing catch in the backyard. A missed pass led the ball tumbling towards the shed. Evan ran over to retrieve the ball and saw that the door of the shed was just opened ajar. Wow, dad must have left it open. Let's look inside, said Evan. No, no way, said Jeb. Dad will skin us alive. Jeb turned and ran back to the house without looking back to see if his brother followed. That night when Jeb came down for dinner, he saw three place settings instead of four. His mother's eyes were red like she had been crying and his father was carving a roast. Where is Evan? asked Jeb. I don't know anyone named Evan, replied his father. 6. The Wanderers We have another one coming our way of K.R. Shan. The atmosphere changed one summer and wiped out everything. No crop would grow, the rain wouldn't fall and people were starving. Andrea was running back to her house carrying a bundle. She burst through the door, locked it, she went straight to the trap door and laid the bundle down. Then she heard them, the wanderers. They were savages that would travel in the search of food. They would kill people for rice. They bashed down the door, walked in and saw Andrea. I heard you have food, said one of the wanderers. I don't have anything, said Andrea. The wanderers searched the whole house and found nothing. Just when they were about to leave, a baby's cry broke through the silence. So you do have food. Number 5. The Accident This next one was also written by Minboy. Dave was driving home after a late night at work. He had been pushing himself hard at work so he was exhausted. He was a little too tired to see what was coming when a cyclist came out and cut in front of him. He hit him dead on. The person tumbled over his hood and in a panic he sped off. Why did he run he thought. He should have stayed. He got home, rushed inside and sat on the couch for hours feeling fear like he had never felt before. He thought it was only a matter of time before they connected this to him. Just then there was a knock at the door. He answered and standing there was a police officer. Dave was frozen. Mr. Mandelson, said the police officer. A yes barely creeped out of Dave's mouth. I'm very sorry to tell you this, but your son was struck and killed on his bike this evening. Number 4. Tired I'm so tired lately. I have so much trouble sleeping and when I do fall asleep I wake up in strange places like standing in the bathroom or living room. Sometimes I have strange dreams that seem all too real. One night I'm struggling to fall asleep so I decide to get up and make myself a snack. I go to the kitchen and start cutting some vegetables and I slice into my finger. But it doesn't hurt my finger. It grows back. And then I realize I'm dreaming. So I decide to push the limits, cut off another finger. It also grows back. Well I should see if I can fly. So I go to head up to the roof but then I slip and fall. This wakes me up and when I come to, I'm on the kitchen floor in a pool of blood and missing two fingers. Number 3. The Mirror Rebecca finally found the perfect mirror to hang in her room after her ex left with the last one. That night she hung it up, grabbed a good book and cuddled up in her room. It was getting late and she heard the phone ring. It was her ex-husband Randy. She rolled her eyes and ignored the call. Just then she saw a shadowy figure in the mirror. 
She got up to take a closer look and the shadow formed into an image. It was her ex-husband standing in a room with a handgun. She turned to look, but there was nothing there. When she looked back to the mirror, it had cleared as well. Feeling very frightened, she called the police. She was unsure what to say, so she told them that she thought Randy might kill himself. An hour later, her phone rang. It was the police. Mrs. Hara, said the officer. We found your ex-husband's car. The door to her room started to creak open. It's parked outside your house. Number two, sleepwalker. This used to happen a few years ago when I was still living at home. I would get woken up by my four year old sister just standing in my room. She was sleepwalking. This would happen to my parents as well. And a few times we found her standing at the top of the stairs. My parents were worried she would fall down the stairs so they installed a child gate. Once in the middle of the night, I woke up to go to the bathroom and I saw my little sister standing at the top of the stairs. She was pointing down to the bottom. It was a little unsettling, but I just led her back to her room and then went back to bed. When it turned to summertime, sometimes I would hear my sister up late at night talking to herself. It was pretty cute, but sometimes I swear I would hear a deep voice respond to her. I eventually went off to college, but we never knew why my little sister would sleepwalk and why it seemed like she wanted us to lead her downstairs. Number one, missing boy. Two weeks ago, my son went missing. I did everything I could do to find him. Filed a police report, search parties, posters, but there was no sign of him. I'd given up hope. I told the police to give up hope, but they didn't. They showed up at my door with a, they showed up at my door with huge smile on their faces. In front of them was my son. They said they found him wandering in the forest at the edge of town. I took him in, but I knew this wasn't my son. Late at night, I would find him standing in the doorway of my room. When I would get up to check if it was him, he would just disappear. He talks like my son, he acts like my son, he looks like my son, but I know this is not my son. I know this because two weeks ago, I killed my son and buried him in the forest at the edge of town. Starting off this countdown, we have the face suit. was uploaded and created by reddit user nude robot baby the whole thing just makes me want to bleach my eyes out like it makes me feel so uncomfortable so according to this user they were wearing a custom motion capture suit while dancing and then for some reason he thought it would be a good idea to make himself a face suit to wear and this was the final outcome know why he thought this was a good idea or like what the meaning behind this is but it's surely creepy when someone asked him why he did this he replied with to appease the face lords so there's that moving on to number nine we have the lost episode and if you guys are liking this video so far make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps us out and i appreciate it so thank you Now I'm glad that this isn't a real Teletubbies episode because that is absolutely horrifying. Like what is up with that giant man baby creature? But that's not all. This weird abstract video gets worse. Literally, this could be made into a horror movie. Like the Teletubbies come out of your screen and try and hunt you down or something. There's absolutely no explanation for this video. It was just posted by some guy in the Reddit forum, Cursed. We don't know who made it or why. In our eighth spot, we have the Haunted Cupboard. So this video was posted into the Cursed subreddit by I Like Cake and Music. Well, me too. I unfortunately don't know where to go. Also, what brand of cereal is that? Like, I've never seen such an evil face on a cereal box before. It's definitely not Honey Nut Cheerios or Raisin Bran, that's for sure. Moving on to number seven, we have the fish. Who here is a fan of fish? Maybe you like salmon or tuna or sushi. Well, this next woman loves fish, especially raw fish. Mal gucken, ob ich das genauso kann wie die Robben. Keine Chance. Okay. I'm sorry, that is too much for me. Not only would that be incredibly stinky, but that can't taste good at all. I'm just glad that she didn't chomp down on it. But still, why did she just put that whole thing in her mouth like that? What's she trying to prove? If she's trying to sell that fish, then she needs to be fired because that is not a good sales pitch at all. That poor fish. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. 
I just have so many questions. Coming in at number six, we have the cursed pig. <laughs> time to get off the internet when you come across a video like this. So this man's name is Johnny Ridlin, and he actually became famous on TikTok for posting weird videos just like this one. He now has 2.6 million followers on TikTok, so he literally gets paid to post weird stuff like this. I mean, personally, that's not my cup of tea, but if you like that stuff, then I guess check out his page. I'm just curious to know how this all started. Like, did he just wake up one day and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna get dressed up like a pig and chow down on some beans. Like, who thinks like that? I mean, it worked. The video went viral and he's got a big following now. Maybe I gotta start doing stuff like that. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the cursed home. So this video was shared in the cursed subreddit by a user named Teriak01. There's no description. The video is just titled The Cursed Home. So the video starts off with a creepy shot of some old stairs. In the background, we can hear muffled screaming. From there, something unexplainable happens. I literally can't describe it at all, so just take a look. Like, what is that? What did I just watch? I genuinely think that that video is cursed, and I'm getting bad vibes here, folks. Bad vibes. In our fourth spot, we have the hot dog ambassador. This is another video that I definitely need someone to explain. So this video was posted by Reddit user Hot Dog Ambassador. It appears to be someone in a hot dog outfit huddled in a corner while the cha-cha slide plays backwards. I mean, when the song is played normally, it's so fun and upbeat, you know, like, right foot, let's stop, mm. left foot, let's stop, hands on your knees, you get it. But it's just so unsettling played backwards. The video gets weirder when this person begins to freak out. I just hope that this mystery hot dog person is okay and not being held captive. Again, like most of these videos, I don't know what on earth is going on, but I'm definitely not here for it. I should also note that this goes on for a full three minutes. And at number three, we have the cursed mom. If you ever thought your mom was annoying or strict, imagine having this woman as your mother. So again, there's no explanation for this video. It was just titled Cursed Mom, and it seriously creeps me out. weird old alien looking lady doing weird things in front of the camera. Sometimes it cuts to black, other times it cuts to static. That woman's face alone is nightmare fuel. You're lying to yourself if that video didn't freak you out. In our second spot, we have the cursed Krabby Patty. Let me start off by apologizing for what I'm about to show you. Hey Patrick. Eat me. Eat me. Yeah, just uh, let that all sink in. I can never look at SpongeBob the same ever again, but it gets worse. After Patrick eats SpongeBob, we see him traveling through his intestines. Where am I? I must be in Patrick's intestines. How am I gonna get out of here? You get the picture as to how he escaped. It's pretty disturbing, but again, 
that's not all. The video ends with Demon SpongeBob feasting on some bread and wine. <laughs> this video actually makes my head hurt. And in our number one spot, we have the cursed ice cream. There's good reason for my glistening skin and how I shine and how my pores are so clean and clear. Now what you saw was actually a clip from an actual TV commercial. Yeah, they aired that. It's an advertisement for Little Baby's ice cream. And nod and hug and high five each other with great enthusiasm. This is a special time. Little Baby's ice cream. Ice cream is a feeling. Apparently the company's goal was to have a very bizarre and unsettling commercial. And it worked because this ad went viral online. So they got a lot of promotion. Sadly, in November 2019, Little Babies permanently closed. All we have left is their super creepy advertisement. I eat Little Babies ice cream. It keeps me young. It keeps me light on my feet. I spring from activity to activity. I love my job. I love my life. I have no clue how that actor did that. There's no way I would do something like that. Number one, I wouldn't be able to keep a straight face. Number two, I don't want to be covered in marshmallow fluff. No, thank you. Number three, it's just weird and disturbing. 